from the cutting edge of anomaly research, you are about to experience the evidence with your host, 3D pioneer and image analyst with Mars X 3D, D.W. Gannett. Hello, and welcome to episode 120 of The Evidence. This is your buddy Dave, over at Mars X3D. And I know some of you who are maybe new to the channel are saying, what the heck is X3D? In a nutshell, it's a way of turning your computer monitor into the world's largest viewmaster. A very cool 3D window right onto the surface of Mars. How do you do it? There's a link below. Howdy and how-to video. Most people, if you have normal 3D vision, can learn it in a matter of a couple of minutes. And by the way, have you noticed that our three-part tutorial, Easy Peasy X3D, is going up? Parts one and two are already up, and uh, number three will go up, I hope, in the next couple of days. And what this is, is a way for you to, sh well, I, what I'm doing is I'm showing you exactly what I do in a very simple way to create some of the X3D anomalies that I present here. Just a few. Most of what I do is depth mapping and pixel displacement, but there's a new program that allows anybody to create beautiful 3D pictures. Here's the thing. Even if you're not into Mars anomalies, you can take your own personal images that you shoot with your camera phone or camera or just or old pictures you've scanned and turn them into beautiful 3D pictures. I show you exactly how in the videos and it's super easy. So maybe think about taking a look at them. Anyway, we have a whole bunch of cool material to dive into this week. So let's go ahead and get to it. Now, I tell you what, this one has been making the rounds lately and everybody is jumping on it like chickens on a June bug. Well, here it is in X3D and some people have called it a woman's shoe. I guess I could see that if the woman was maybe Picasso's wife. Well, let's get in just a little bit closer. And uh, here's the deal. Nerol Iman Subardi. As far as I know, he was the first one to point this out. Every other big name in the field has said, oh, no, it's me. But this, this guy found it first. And what I find interesting about it, first of all, is uh, using Occam's razor. This is probably a metafact, something formed by wind and sand. And uh, you can see by the fluid, curving shape of it, that it's likely something caused by the flow of wind over the surface of the stone. But what I do find interesting in the lower left-hand corner is that nice little square 45-degree angle block. What's that all about? Sarah Runcy has been pretty busy lately, and she's been finding some interesting things, and this one is, is down there in the yellow target, down in the center. And when we have a look at this, this is a strange one. And yeah, I know, I know it's blurry, but uh, you can see okay in 3D, can't you? <laughs> this reminds me of a little bug-eyed critter whistling a tune. Uh, of course, that's not what it is. I have no idea what it is. Maybe uh, you could offer a suggestion? This uh, cliff face is really interesting. Uh, I've got circled that uh, doorway in the center, but there's several other areas we're going to look at first. And, and if you actually take the time to go to this Giga Macro and, and have a look at it, you'll find all kinds of stuff that uh, sure doesn't seem natural. For example, look at this stuff here that I'm calling a cluster of mech material, mechanical material. And uh, you may not be able to clearly discern what I'm talking about here, so let me just uh, highlight it for you. So as you let your eyes play around in this uh, target area, 
I mean, look at all the squares and the radial features and the uh, things that look like machinery. I mean, is this all just erosion or is it something more? I really don't know, but uh, it sure doesn't look natural to me. And what are we to make of this area here? I mean, obviously there are all those right angles and that whole section to the left, which seems to be completely right angles and squares and everything else, but there's a lot more there too. So is the entire cliff like that? Is it just an erosional feature of this particular cliff? It may well be, but again, this is very suspicious looking stuff to my eyes. And here we are back at that kind of doorway that was marked in the first context view. And, you know, this is, this is interesting. Now, this fellow, Frederick Bolin, who first pointed this out, called this a face. And, of course, if you let your pareidolia play with you, yeah, you can see a mouth and some eyes and stuff. But uh, a face, really, I don't think so. But pretty, pretty suspicious. And it looks like an opening, a tunnel opening, uh, going back into the cliff through that thing that might be a mouth, so who knows? This next one was uh, pointed out by a fellow named Brent Foster. That's a new name to me. And you can see it crowded up against the uh, right-hand side in the middle, inside the red target. So we've got a number of interesting items in uh, this one. So let's start with the one top center that he seemed to think were gear or cogs. Now that's a nice clean hole right in the center at the top. Again, it looks like it's whistling a tune. You've got a nice even arch and a lip. And then you have those little knobby deals down at the bottom that he's calling gear cogs. I'm not sure that's what it is, but you can tell that this is definitely intelligently made. Over here on the left uh, may well just be just a, a boulder, but it is very evenly shaped and it has those recessed markings in it. It could be carving, it could just be erosion, but uh, it certainly is an artifact candidate in my mind. If you ever had a Play-Doh factory when you were a kid, and you'd put the Play-Doh in and squeeze it and it'd come out through a kind of a cookie cutter and make a shape. That's what this reminds me of. It looks like an extruded form. It's got kind of a curve to it and those parallel lines. But uh, what impresses me is that end that's all lit up. That's a perfect square with rounded corners, symmetrical all the way around. And of course, we also have that item off to the left, that triangular piece that's hollow and has a little cross piece. Again, these are all very suspicious looking items. Here's a good one that uh, Mars Leaks shared just the other day, and you'll want to check out his channel here on YouTube. I'll try to remember to put a link down below, but uh, this is a nice find. It's inside the Aquamarine box. I really like this one. It's in three segments and it's just full of uh, non-fractals, at least that square on the left-hand portion with the circle inside. Whether that's a pipe or a circle or engraved something or other, who knows, but that left side has a handle on top, it looks like, in a recessed square and of course the hole in the center of it on the side facing us with the two rivets or bumps. That center section looks like a, a line of vertebrae sticking out the top like the spine of a fossilized animal. And then that spade-shaped portion on the right, uh, symmetrical, and it has a whole line of what might be bas-relief carving uh, going up the middle. So what is this? Is this a, a, a stela that's been tipped over, a statue? Um, an old machine? I, I don't know, but I know for sure. If I was on Mars, I'd head straight for it and find out what the heck it is. Now we have a whole string of images uh, that feature 
what might be lettering and some other strange items found by San Kotvix and Mike Decibel and myself. We're going to start off with that boulder down in the right hand corner. I find this one really compelling. Not the least of which is that what seems to be lettering so nice and even and square and parallel along that top right edge. But here's the thing. The rest of the boulder, if that's what it is, appears to have been affected by water over a long period of time. It has that fluid, smooth weathering that we find in alluvial deposits. And here's another thing. Those markings really do appear to be glyphs or letters of some kind, arranged in a very square and parallel fashion. But let's look at a few more examples from this and one other pan. Here's another one just a short distance away that looks as if it was part of the first one we looked at. It has the same type of lettering or glyphs, if you will, along one edge. And then look under the arrow. We have what appears to be an extruded triangular piece. So are these parts of a broken temple, a broken building, uh, or did this all just come about naturally? Well, let's look at some more and see what you think. Here's one from 3391 that Mike Dezebel pointed out. Now you see it right there inside the yellow target. So here we have basically the same thing. Those parallel arrangements of what appear to be glyphs or, or writing. Some of them even looks like uh, Paleo-Hebrew. But uh, that has to, you know, you got to ask the question. Are there erosional processes on Mars that are responsible for this? Is this something that we can just expect to see every time we turn over a boulder? Or are these parts of a broken building? Back in uh, 3387 again, here's a really unusual chunk of something. Is it uh, mechanical? Is it, is it natural? I, you know, here again, we don't know. But that curved dish-like portion on the right has a raised portion of what appears to be lettering, bas-relief lettering, down the center. There are a couple other things, real strange things, that I'd like to show you in this particular pan. Let your eyes play over this thing for a couple of seconds before I start breaking it down for you because this is full of suspicious shapes. We'll start with this square top which is you can see part of an entire cube. Hard to ignore and uh, a little a little hard to tell what's on top there, but it appears to be some structure happening there. Again, cubes occurring naturally? Well, yes they do, but not like this. And just below we have this triangular piece with two holes drilled through it. It looks like the lightning holes that they drill in an aircraft rib to me. Then we have these two circular extensions. The one on the bottom right is kind of worse for the wear, but the one on the left is really, really symmetrical, and it extends from the center of the cube. Very interesting erosion, in my opinion. Then up here on the right, we have what looks like a broken and tangled mechanism. And if I was going to assign a meaning to it, I would say it reminds me of a radial aircraft engine. Uh, you can see the radial arrangement and what might be pistons and, of course, a hub. No prop, of course, but uh, again, I'm just assigning an, an interpretation. That's not what it is, but it is really suspicious, don't you think? And I really like this one. This kind of looks like a tank tread, a tank relic. 
Uh, you can imagine that there's a tread going around it, and of course there are the various hubs and uh, axles that would have turned the gearing for the tread. And uh, so, you know, maybe it is. Maybe it's a, a very badly corroded remains of a tread vehicle, a tread type vehicle. Or it's something else. But whatever it is, it sure doesn't belong there. Let's wrap things up today with uh, another very recent find by Sarah Runcy, who's kind of been on a roll lately. And of course, there it is down uh, center right. And we're going to take a closer look. Now, in my opinion, this is a really great find because it's so clear, it's close, and the carvings appear to be intelligently made. Now there are some that say, oh well, spirals occur in nature all over the earth, but you know, I've requested a couple of people who've made those statements to please show me some analogies here on earth. I'd love to see them, but so far, no takers. Now, they do appear all over earth. Let me show you. You see, the spiral is an ubiquitous item that we find in ancient cultures all over Earth. Sometimes they represented the power of nature or the cyclical nature of the universe or power in different ways, but the spiral is something that has been with us since the beginning. So it does beg the question, was our beginning on Mars? Well, thanks for spending a little bit of time with me today. I know you have a busy schedule, but the time you spend with me, I really do appreciate it. If you saw something you liked, please leave a thumbs up. That helps me out a lot. Click that join button if you'd like to become part of the Proud Weirdos First class. And there are other levels as well. And you know, don't forget to check out the Easy Easy X3D. They're going to show you just what you need to do to make beautiful 3D images. And I'd love for you to catch the bug like so many of us around the world have. Also, we have exciting things coming down the pike for you. We'll tell you all about it in the weeks and months ahead. In the meantime, this is your buddy Dave over Mars X3D. And by the way, for all you proud weirdos out there, you know who you are. Stay safe and stay weird. Be well.